The Zambezi region, formerly known as the Caprivi, is the only region in Namibia that shares its borders with three other countries, namely Angola, Botswana and Zambia. The Zambezi region is a tropical area with high temperatures and much rainfall during the rainy season, making it the wettest region in Namibia. With its rich, diverse cultures, spectacular open waterways, abundant bird and wildlife, the Zambezi region welcomes you. The Sangwali Cultural Group was founded in honor of their Induna, or King. The soft river reed dress, called Mashamba, adds to the drum rhythm and provides a unique melody. The women use this dance to show maturity and attract potential future husbands. Spiritual healing is best administered through music and dance. The Mafwe's own Sikwekwe cultural group derives its name from the island that is a refuge for the community during drought periods. This island was named after a big snake called Sikwekwe that used to live on it. Apart from the ancient knowledge whereby natural resources are used as medicine, the traditional healer also secures the help of the spirit world for the benefit of the community. Blacksmiths have always been considered magical craftsmen. They understand and toy with fire and by its aid manipulate iron to their will in this ancient method of tool making. The Zambezi region consists of swamps, woodlands, wetlands, and floodplains. The Kwando, Zambezi, Linyati, and Chobi rivers make up the areas of open water in this unique region. Riverine woodlands in the Zambezi and Kwando river valleys are characterized by a high diversity of tall trees. Older elephants seek out soft water plants when their teeth have worn out and eventually die near watering holes. This elephant became a feast for a local pride of lions. The river floodplains are dominated by grasslands and old river channels. Impalila woodlands covering Impalila Island make up a small but unique area based on basalt rock. The soul-stirring sunsets on these unique water channels are a definite must on any visitor's bucket list.
the Zambezi region supports a great deal of aquatic plant life and leafy vegetation. Day water lily is the most common water lily in the region. The flower opens during the day and closes at night. The poison pod Albazia's bark and roots have medicinal uses for treatments of constipation, worms and also taken as an enema. The open-billed stalk has a gap in its bill to allow extracting water mussels and snails from their shell. The white-fronted bee-eater has a red throat and white band below the mask. It prefers well-wooded areas near water. The pied kingfisher hunts for fish by hovering above water. It occurs in pairs or family groups and nests in sandbank barrows. The Mopani woodlands lie in old river drainage lines covered by wind-blown sand deposits. This ancient baobab tree on Impalila Island was used as an outlook post by the occupying forces against the liberation movement of Namibia. Visitors can still see evidence of this recent past on the tree. The ellipsin waterbuck has a white, ellipse-shaped ring on the rump that extends above the tail. Despite their name, Waterbuck do not spend much time in water, but will take refuge there to escape predators. The Chakma baboon often sleep in large groups on cliffs or in trees at night to avoid predators. Adult crocodiles, large fish and birds eat 99% of the crocodile offspring in their first year of life. Cape buffalo are reported to kill more hunters in Africa than any other animal. They are known to ambush hunters that have wounded or injured them. Elephant calves usually nurse no longer than 18 months. Sexual maturity can occur any time between ages 10 and 22. Elephants are social animals and can live up to 80 years. The hippopotamus live in herds of 20 to 30 and are not very fast swimmers. Elephants, however, are excellent swimmers. They love water and frequently bathe in lakes and rivers. With almost 70% of bird species in Namibia recorded in the Zambezi region, nature hikes can be a very fulfilling activity. Canoeing is a great way to reflect the serene river in silence. Angling is a very popular sport. The boat safaris on offer are a safe way to study wildlife up close, without putting yourself in danger.
At Nkasa Lupala, it is not uncommon to find these majestic animals next to your accommodation facilities. The luxury accommodation of the Zambezi Queen on the Chobi River is in a league of its own. One of the densest wildlife populations on the African continent can be viewed from here. The beautiful accommodation on the banks of the Kwando River or camping facilities under a boobab tree easily succeed in making your experience unforgettable. Mashi Conservancy's Muchaka Yuber sheds light on human wildlife conflict management. We only became a gazetted conservancy in 2003. And why it was formed, it was that uh, we also looked into the issue of conserving the natural resources. And the other thing was that we have to benefit from the resources that we are looking after so that we can improve the livelihood of our community. So we have some uh, different projects that we are running currently. But uh, one of it, I can say, we have the chili uh, gardens that we are um, in joint venture with uh, some of the community members. Lisa Wuli Chili Farms, Kabula Hidden, explains. The chili, what we do, some we make on the chili bombs, because the reason why we are planting them, they were just told us to plant for them so they can help the people, to buy them and give to the people as well. And even ourselves, we can use for protect from the most special as elephants. What they do, they just come through in the field, they just eat our crops. Whenever you try, they, even they can chase you in the crops as well. The way we use it, we just let it, the way I explain it, we just make it wet. From there, wet, mix with the chili, with the elephant dunks. Let it dry, maybe it take a week, you dry them. After dry them, then you put charcoal on there, so it will lighten like a coil. So that smoke is only the uh, can spread all the areas. Yes, we, uh, that's only the smoke which can protect there. It's very like a harmful. You say that, yeah. The Katima Mulilo Open Market is a definite one stop shop for the chef in you. Welcome to Endless Horizons. We're now a cooking show. We're here today at the mighty Zambezi in the Zambezi region. With three sourced um, ingredients from Katima Mulilo. We have some dried okra, we have nakatenge, little dried fish, and river flowers, which are called mutete. We're going to do a lovely Zambezi gumbo for you. And this is going to be served on some fresh cabbage. So we're going to use the nakatenge and we're going to wash it twice and then discard the water every time. This is double blanching. And then we're going to take the okra and we're going to throw this with the same amount of water. It's a bit of bicarb of soda. Let's add a bit of salt. We're going to cook this down. And we're going to throw the mutete into, this is the dried flowers, and just keep on stirring. And then after that, it's been cooking for about five minutes and it's been reduced about half of the liquid that there was in the initial side. We will add the fish. And we'll keep on stirring until the liquid is basically vanished, but there still has to be a gooey, gummy texture to it. So we're going to basically finely shred the cabbage and just leave it at the bottom of the bowl and just heat and the sauce of the gumbo will actually cook this lightly so it will be very al dente, very to the tooth. Make the endless horizons of the Zambezi region your next holiday destination. <music>